our grandfather, Leonardo Alfredo Daniela, he immigrated from the east provinces of Abruzzi and Italy in the early 20s and started the New York Barbershop on Marcus Street in Williamsport. My father got out of the barbering business in 1984 when we started Franco's. We've been in business in downtown Williamsport since the early 1900s. Independent family, you know, businesses, which, um, like, you know, the three locations of the New York Barbershop, Joanna's Bakery on Market Street. My grandfather, Alfredo, they call, his name was Leonardo Alfredo, they called him Alfredo. That's who I was named after. Um, my, gra my grandfather was Leonardo Alfredo, my dad's Francis Alfredo. I'm Alfredo Francis and my younger brother is Francis Anthony. So there's a lot of, a lot of the same name being thrown around there. But, but um, they had my father, and he was born in 1930. He was the only child. He was basically like a first-generation, second-generation Italian immigrant. Um, he learned Italian from his parents. Um, when it came time to teaching our generation, my parents you know, wanted to be more American and we lost our culture pretty much through the 60s, 70s. Now it seems to be the thing to do, go back to learning your culture, learning your ancestry roots, things like that. But but my, my dad, um, I always remember the story where um, my dad wanted to go out for football in high school. And my grandfather um, asked him, what time do you get out of school? And he said, 3 o'clock. He said, we'll be in the barbershop at 3.30. That was his answer to going out to foot for football. He, he was required at that point to go to work and apprentice and learn how to cut hair. What did, we, uh, I drive around and stalk the other restaurants to see whether <laughs> they're doing any better business than ours and try to figure out why that could be happening. Marie and I both kind of bang yeah, our heads on the... troubleshoot. We have to. So, you know, we're open, the Moon and Raven's open. They seem to have a better lunch crowd for whatever reason. Proximity, who knows? Um, but, you know, we've had some tables in. It's been fun. Today we've had maybe three or four tables, maybe. Yeah. But again, depending on the day, the time of the year, the weather, it all plays variables. Um, affect your business, affect your lunch, whether whether uh, people are going to show up or not. And then if it's something happening downtown, like a parents' weekend, at, like homing or Penn College or or whatever, homecoming or football, Penn State football games. Interestingly, Penn State, an hour away, people stay at our hotels in our downtown, and and it's kind of like a nice uh, way uh, to stay over for a Penn State game. People people will uh, check into a local hotel in Williamsport, commute in and out of the game, and hang out in Williamsport for the night or the weekend. I've been very fortunate through the years. We, we really had no idea of the restaurant industry. I was just getting uh, back from college. I had graduated in 83 from Wilkes College with biology and psychology. I was hoping to have gotten into a med school. I was almost, I had a nomination to West Point. I was going to go there, but I chose Wilkes. As a result, um, two years into the program, Reagan cut educational funding. It was dissolved. My sister Maria had been managing the local Bonanza restaurant. So she came into the fold. My dad, you know, sold his barbershop, took over the restaurant. We, again, more or less bought that as a family venture. And we all kind of converged on what now is Franco's. We strive to make a, just a very friendly atmosphere, a very welcoming place for people. And one thing for sure that we've always strived for, and our father especially has instilled upon us, is hospitality and making f people feel comfortable, especially women. Like we always wanted a place where women, if they were by themselves, could come in and feel comfortable walking into a bar um, a restaurant and being by themselves but not feeling at odds with the whole thing. They can come in, 
We welcome them. We get them a seat at the bar. The bar is always a great spot to meet people because the bartender chats them up and makes them feel comfortable. And we're very fortunate we have a great staff and um, everyone does a great job. You want to try my clam chowder? Not at all. Why? I started waitressing here when I was 18 years old. I worked in the kitchen for, for about uh, three years before that as a prep cook and a salad maker. Um, my father as my boss, it's sort of like owning a puppy, I guess. Like it's fun and like great sometimes. And it's, it's cute to work with family. There's some perks, um, but it also, once in a while, there's some instances that you probably wouldn't have to deal with if you were in a normal job. But um, we're very similar, which is why I think we clash sometimes. We both like to be in control. We're both very passionate. Um, we both like things our way. It can be very challenging, you know, and, and she's a very, I love her. I'm very fortunate to have her working with us. I mean, a lot of people don't have that experience. And, you know, like I know my dad always valued that after being a barber uh, for years with his father and then having us work with him in the restaurant. What are your memories of Franco's? <laughs> I already explained it to you. Okay. Only thought it was a dump. Yeah. Yeah. Cleaned it up, yeah. and all of a sudden, turned it around, got rid of glasses upstairs, mugs it over. That's worse. <laughs> It was quite a belligerent crowd there for a while, oh, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We inherited right. a bunch of <laughs> customers that you know, were running the place, basically. The inmates were running the asylum when we took over. And uh, we had to exercise a little supervision and ultimately control over it. And it worked out. I got a crew together. I said, can you handle it? Yeah, no problem. Where are we going to get the towels? You need to get a bundle of towels? I'll get them. There were 50 through the bundle. 50 towels plus others that we had. I can't talk too well. But you remember the towels, setting up with the towels. I always give you credit for the hooks under the bar. Everybody thinks that's a great idea. I said that was one of your last great projects. That was a good idea. That was one of your last great projects at Franco's, the hooks under the bar. No, and the last one's well, back one of them. One of them. One of them. He tried to make an old man out of me. Yeah, it's sad to see him, you know, at 88. He, his health has declined, but all in all, he's lucky. He's in great health. What, what memories do you have of mom? What memories do you have of mom? All of them. All of what? All of your memories? We sit and we look at pictures and we talk about my mom and try not to dwell on the bad of it. And, and again, the same thing with our dad is that he's in great health and, and he's doing well. My mom, um, I mean, her health declined, but she, she lived a good, happy life, 85 when she passed. So that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's up there. But, uh, you know, it's just the quality of life. And, you know, you just take care of those who once took care of you. You know, there's a saying that that is the highest honor, and I, I believe that. So a good friend of the family, Steve Kaiser, got this for my mom and dad. It's a little dog dressed as a gondolier. And uh, my mom loved the song, O Solo Mio. sing along with it. It was great. Wasn't that funny? You know, my mother's bakery had transitioned since 09. Um, for it, my brother Francis had gotten involved. My sister Roseanne was still involved. There's a perfectly good opportunity with this closed airport restaurant. They need something down there. And at the time, there was a kiosk on the first floor, a coffee kiosk. But um, we thought we, you know, we could create this Cloud 9. And uh, the idea was to put the bakery in a facility where they could run a restaurant with it and then symbiotically, you know, work with each other. The bakery supporting the restaurant, supporting Franco's at the same time. We need whipped cream and, and melba sauce on that. Well, we'll 
Uh, my name is Francis Daniele. I've been in the business for about 35 years, the restaurant business, and I'm the executive chef and the executive pastry chef here at Cloud9 Restaurant. I thought we'd be here for 12 to 15 years, but because the, the board of directors for the airport took a different direction in the new building of the terminal, they decided to go with a smaller uh, space and not put a full service restaurant in. But yeah, it's sad because you know, you grow in the community, you get to know people, the regulars come in, you get to know them. My, my name is Thomas Herb, I'm from Ohio. My nephew, Brian, went to college at Lycoming and we came to Franco's, fell in love with the place. And Francis, he's an awesome guy. And we decided to come here for our last supper because they're closing. We love them. They are so welcoming. They make us feel like family. Made a lot of good friends here. And Francis did a great job with the clientele. He's a nice following. And, you know, now he doesn't, you know, it's sad for him to see everybody go. And I don't know what he's going to do, so. It's a crossroad in life, I guess. Six and a half years ago, moving in to this space, we had to gut it and then we had to renovate it. So that was a process too, organizing and setting up and getting ready to open up a restaurant. It's just as hectic and, and uh, crazy with organization and purchasing things as it is closing it up. He charges 25% of the total sales, where we learn later other people were paying 10%, and so that kind of struck us as maybe we could have gotten a better deal there. But then just the way they auctioned it off was pretty hasty, and, and just like those booths, for example. Eight beautiful big booths, I thought we could have sold them individually, where he sold them all at once and got $100 for eight booths, which cost us about $8,000. You know, you know, you take your lumps in any uh, business or industry, um, but I think it went well overall. You know, we like I said, we took our lumps and probably overall maybe lost some money, but, you know, again, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, we were honored to be there. You know, it was a great restaurant through the years. So they don't roll. You know, they were yep, saying. Yep, exactly. Just a flat bottom. Place yeah, flat bottom. That's what I'm With dealing with people, you know, staff and customers and the dynamics of a restaurant, it's it's tough to manage people to get them to react how you think they should react or how you'd like them to react or or cook or prepare food or you know just different mentalities and ideas. I can't reach it myself. Let me just grab it, and I'm gonna put these, so what am I leaving these as? Francis! Yeah, Francis. Wait a minute, I'm packing up some food. No, that's okay. Oh, will you just wait, please? All right. <laughs> Sorry, I really get pissed off? Oh. <laughs> it's a great business to be in. You meet so many people. And there are, are those people that will drive you crazy, but those are outshined by the good people and the fun people, and it, and it creates a lot of memories. There's no other business like, like the restaurant industry. And it, one thing that irritates me is when people say, it's not a real job, because it does not get any more real than that. Let me tell you. <laughs>